I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Glendale Adventist Hospital in the PMT or Physician Medical Terrace building. We'll have my information on, on my PowerPoint soon and I will share my screen. Today I'll be talking about shoulder injuries and, and what to expect, what to do, how to treat them, uh, including everything up to uh, shoulder arthritis and the treatment for that. So we will share my screen and begin. Great. So I think that's working. Can I get a nod from Rita? Rita, I see you on the side. Yes. Great. All right. So uh, common shoulder injuries, conditions, treatments. Um, I am a, a general orthopedist. I do pretty much everything and I do a lot of trauma, do a lot of sports, joints, and things like that. But I did spend an extra year subspecializing in shoulder and elbow, upper extremity reconstruction. So I, I've done quite a extensive uh, training and uh, subspecialization in this area. So it's kind of like my, my baby. I really love talking about it and, and, and treating patients for this. My information, uh, I'm at the PMT building right across the East Tower on the third floor, suite 310, that's 1505 Wilson Terrace. My office number is here, it's 818-237-2248. We're here Monday through Friday. Um, and um, uh, my email is actually on here. I usually get my email out um, uh, on my business card. So if you have any questions, you guys can feel free to email as well. A little bit about me. I'm born and raised in San Francisco. I, I went to UCLA, went to med school in Chicago, trained out of New York, New Jersey, and I came back at, to uh, Curlin Job for a fellowship year in the shoulder and elbow reconstruction. Uh, I'm trilingual, uh, so Armenian and Spanish, no problem. Uh, actually, in some ways, it's better than my English. Um, and I love sports, music, and I'm actually playing on a basketball team tonight. Uh, and I play with Dr. Jack Yu at, at the Adventist uh, uh, team as well. Uh, once COVID gets better, we will play probably more. So um, today's goal, uh, I want to got, briefly talk about the anatomy of the shoulder, uh, some common problems that you may have heard of, you may not have, uh, or you may even have, uh, and, and hopefully this connects the dots for you guys, uh, how to diagnose and treat them, and, and when to come see the specialist. So the shoulder is uh, kind of like a, a, big a big golf ball on a little golf ball tee. So it's not like the hip where it's a ball in a cup. Uh, it's, it's more of an unstable joint and that's on purpose. We want it to be a big golf ball on a little golf ball tee because that provides it to have as much motion as possible. So uh, the shoulder is actually made up of uh, multiple bones and multiple joints. The biggest one being the glenohumeral or the big golf ball and golf ball tee. And this is, uh, hopefully you guys can see this on the side of my screen and you can see the comparison of the big golf ball and little golf ball tee. So it's, it's actually inherently the most unstable joint in the body. And that's because we can do so much with it. If you look at your fingers, they can really only flex and extend. If you look at your shoulder, you can do a jumping jack. You can kind of twirl it around. You can do a lot more. And that's, and that's, what, that's on purpose. And as a result, though, it is uh, prone to getting certain injuries uh, from overuse or uh, overstretching. Uh, and we'll talk about some of those uh, in a little bit. So... Um, we have a lot of things in the shoulder that provide its stability, that provide its um, security. Uh, and that's things uh, that are called the labrum, the capsule, the rotator cuff, these ligaments, the muscles around the shoulder. So it's all act acting as a comprehensive unit that provides stability, function, and ability to move the way it is. So if one thing is off, things start flaring up, other parts get overused, parts get inflamed, that's when things start hurting, and then that's when things start getting hurt. So this is pretty extensive for everybody, but this is just a, a kind of a diagram of just some of the tissues deep in the shoulder. There is something called the rotator cuff, which is a set of four muscles that become tendons and go into the ball of the shoulder. These muscles and tendons uh, help rotate the shoulder help elevate the arm and help keep the ball centered. So when one thing is off, it kind of affects the whole balance, unfortunately. And sometimes things need to get fixed. Other times things can be rehabbed and everything else can get better. Um, so common shoulder problems. Well, I mean, some of the most common things are overuse, inflammation and impingement. So we have things in the shoulder that can get inflamed. We call it bursitis or tendonitis. 
there are different tendons that can get inflamed. There are a uh, certain area that we call a bursa that gets inflamed. And the bursa is like a small fluid filled sac in between the bone and the rotator cuff to act as a cushion. You guys can see the, I hope you can see the blue kind of thing outlined there on the side of the screen. Uh, that is something that gets inflamed from overuse. And as you elevate your arm, that sac kind of keeps hitting the bone on top called the acromion. This leads to inflammation and pain, especially when people raise their arm. And I'm sure there's some people in the audience right now that get some pain when they kind of bring their shoulder up to about the shoulder high level and then above that. And that is because of this constant kind of game of uh, getting this area squeezed or pushed up against that bone. And that bone may develop a bone spur as a result, which again, actually causes more pain and irritation of that area. That's something that we call subacromial impingement or just impingement. Impingement's almost like a generic term, non-medical, uh, and it means a block to motion. So as you can see in this diagram on the right, this patient is raising their arm up and you can see the bursa, the blue sac, you can see the tendon underneath and the bone underneath, but you also see the bone up top. So that little space, there's a lot happening in that little space. That space is about one centimeter of space. And uh, there's a tendons, there's bursa, there's tissue, there's bone spurs. And if anything is in that area causing an issue of that area or a narrowing of that area, like a bone spur or inflammation, it can lead to pain. And this is something where sometimes we do a shot or give medicine, or this is sometimes something that we address surgically as a structural engineer to open up that space. If it goes untreated, uh, especially in the case of a bone spur, it can cause a tear of that tissue, which can then lead to further problems like weakness, pain, and even instability of the shoulder. And I'll show you at the end of the presentation, the ultimate outcome of that, which is a bad form of arthritis that we have to replace the shoulder for. So um, as we go, please just kind of set, put your questions in the chat and we'll get to them at the end and I'll read them and I'll go through each one. But I hope so far everybody's kind of, kind of with me so far. So uh, these are just kind of the different hooks or bone spurs that we can see in that bone up top called the acromion. And we kind of shave it to make it look more like a type two or a type one to free up that space. And on the MRIs on the right, you can kind of see that white piece of bone. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but um, sometimes this is a structural issue is the point of this slide. And we address that surgically. Again, pain coming up to about 60 and 90 degrees and up. Uh, for these, a lot of times we start physical therapy, we give some anti-inflammatories and we do a steroid shot and Rita's over there practicing. I love it. I love it, Rita, yes. So this is a clinical finding consistent with what we call impingement. And I see this almost five to seven times a day. Um, if there's a hook, a bone hook, or if there's a tear, then we start talking about, hey, should we go in there and remove the hook, repair the tear? It just depends on how aggressive you wanna get and how much it's bothering you. Usually in younger patients, I kind of push more to fix it. In older patients, I kind of wait and see how they, what they really want. Uh, a steroid shot certainly helps calm the pain down, but it doesn't get rid of the structural issue. So if you have a structural issue, you know, it's, it's probably best to address it if this keeps causing issues. Uh, uh, if it's just pain once in a while and you can live with it, then we live with it. If it's something that's really bothering you and you didn't get better with the basics, and we start talking about going in there surgically with a small camera, making three small holes and cleaning it up, which is a very common surgery that I do uh, several a week. Uh, let's see, frozen shoulder. I'm sure somebody in the audience has had frozen shoulder. This is a very common thing. Uh, and it's for uh, unknown reasons that we get it a lot of times. Um, it is associated with more, more prevalent in females in their forties yeah. who are fertile, the three F's we call it. It could be seen after trauma. It could be seen randomly. It could be associated with diabetes or thyroid problems. So everybody who gets a frozen shoulder in their thirties or forties, I ask about their diabetes, about their thyroid, and I send them to their primary to make sure that we're not missing something else. Um, if, if you get it on one side, you're, you're prone to get it on the other side. Uh, I see it a lot after surgery or after trauma to the shoulder because of the immobility. We put patients in slings, they, they get frozen, they, they don't move their shoulder. And then now we have this other problem of frozen shoulder. 
So what is a frozen shoulder? It's when the ball in the socket, the balloon around the ball and socket, or the capsule, we call it, shrivels up and gets rigid. And this is something that's self-limited, which means it will get better on its own with time, but it can take up to a year and a half, and you may be left with some loss of motion, especially the rotation. Female patients hate this because they have trouble putting on their bra. Male patients complain about you know, cleaning themselves up in the, after themselves in the, uh, in the bathroom. Uh, so there are functional things daily that you will notice that it will be difficult to do, but the general treatment of this is time, physical therapy. We highly recommend a steroid shot in the capsule, in the balloon to help expand that joint and loosen up that tissue. Uh, sometimes after about six or nine months of therapy, patients still have significant stiffness. You know, we go in there surgically again with a small camera and we open up or we actually rip open the balloon. So I had a patient, she's 41. Uh, she had frozen shoulder for two years. She could not, she did not improve with therapy. She did not want surgery. She was a, she was a teacher. She couldn't get surgery done until the summertime. We waited two years like she wanted and we did surgery within six weeks. She has almost full range of motion and she hasn't been able to move her shoulder in two years. And we still have ways to go to get better. So she's happy as a clam. And every time I see her, she keeps getting better. So uh, I just saw her yesterday. That's why I'm reminded of her every time I think about this. Um, next, the, these are, this is gonna be talking about tears, tears in the shoulder. So you can tear your rotator cuff, you can tear your biceps. Um, what do we do with rotator cuff tears? We can rehab them or we can fix them. Uh, sometimes you have partial tears, not, not a full on tear. So I explain it as like an old pair of pants that are almost see-through, but they're still kind of, uh, there's, there's not a hole. And a full thickness tear is when somebody takes a pair of scissors and cuts a hole in your pants. Now, if you were to fall wearing those pants, that hole will get bigger. So this is something that if it's small, it's not as big of an issue, uh, but it can be an issue later if you continue, if it continues to progress. Now, 50% of people over 60, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of you guys out there might be in that age group, 50% of you have a rotator cuff tear and don't even know it. And that's because there's so many other things in the shoulder that act as a unit that can compensate for this. So we don't necessarily jump to surgery unless it is causing an issue, causing problems, pain, weakness, or if it's a fresh tear from a trauma, that those are something that we like to repair. If it's something that's degenerative, as in it's happening with time, then we kind of rehab it and see how you do. You know, again, rotator cuff. So the supraspinatus, the rotator cuff up top, helps you elevate your arm. When it's torn, patients complain of pain and weakness elevating the arm. And if it's torn and causing issues, it kind of makes sense to try to repair it. This is a very specific MRI. That white area on top of the ball is where there should be a tendon, there should be tissue. So I have patients with this every day who have a rotator cuff tear and we have the discussion about what to do, how to treat it. The longer you wait, the more that tissue atrophies, retracts and becomes irreparable. So I try to rehab these for a while and see how patients do but I try to get to these surgically within about three to four months. Otherwise it's a bit too late. So if you guys have a rotator cuff tear out there and you start therapy with your primary care doctor, great, that's a good, 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 uh, good idea. But if you're not getting better, you know, it is a time sensitive thing. And the sooner you can come to the specialist and, and get worked up, the uh, better chance you have of a successful outcome in terms of surgery. So treatments like everything, it's uh, anti-inflammatories, physical therapy, treating your pain, maybe a steroid shot. Uh, for partial tears, I love PRP. It, it has been shown to increase the thickness of the partial tear. So imagine an old pair of jeans that are thinned out so much that on a cold day, you feel the wind coming through that thinned out portion and you inject PRP there. And then all of a sudden, a few months later, it actually becomes thicker again and it becomes stronger. That's what PRP does. It is the only thing shown to promote healing that's not surgery. It's an injection of your own platelets back to an area where you have a partial injury. Uh, it has been studied for over 10 years with rotator cuff tears, and it's been very promising. Unfortunately, insurance doesn't cover it. And as soon as I start talking about that, uh, it becomes an issue with patients in terms of financial means. But I think it's something that is very beneficial. There's no downside, very safe to do. 
uh, and it could help heal things. So it is something I talk about, especially with my younger patients who uh, don't want a surgery. Um, so yes, we like to repair the tear to help avoid a domino effect. And I'll talk about the form of arthritis you can get if you don't repair the tear, which is a, a nasty form of arthritis. Here's what repairs look like. We, we actually drill anchors into the bone. And in these anchors, we have these steel wires, we call fiber wire, very thin wires that stay, that we run through the tendon stump and we attach it back down to the bone. And it takes about six months to grow roots into the bone. So this is about a six month to a year recovery, guys. It is a process, but it's meant to restore your normal anatomy and to prevent any future problems that will require a shoulder replacement. I know Dr. Morgan, I think, gave you guys a talk about knee replacements. If there was something for the knee to help prevent a knee replacement, I think people would jump all over it. In the shoulder, we do have something to prevent a shoulder replacement, and that's to repair these tears. So even if it doesn't hurt a lot or it's not bothering you much, if it's a big tear, you know, you can develop a secondary form of arthritis, and then all of a sudden, you may need a shoulder replacement. So I think it's nicer to repair these, to go for that. It's a smaller surgery, safer, a little bit longer of a recovery because you want the tendon to heal. But I think it's certainly something to talk about with your surgeon. And I'm happy to talk to you guys about it anytime. On the right side of the screen, this blue and white patch that we have over the tendon, this is, a, this is a, a, an awesome new thing that uh, I actually wrote a paper on um, in fellowship about three years ago. We did the most of this in my training and it's like a augmentation procedure, it's a patch. So if there's a partial tear, like a partial thinning of the pants, uh, and what we used to do to repair these, we used to fully detach this and reattach a full thickness part back. But that's a six month to a year recovery. You're hoping that the tendon grows roots and heals. This is an augmentation procedure where we put a patch on top of the partial tear and it's been shown to increase the thickness by almost three millimeters. Three millimeters in this part of the body is more than 50% of the thickness of the tissue normally. So this is something that will increase the thickness of your partial tear, get it to heal, get incorporated in your repair, and, and really help with your pain and your strength. So this is, a, this is a, something that I, I do almost routinely now on all patients with partial tears, uh, and, and it's a great way to try to get it to heal and to add to the thickness of this uh, substance. You can also tear other things like your biceps. This guy, this guy is not much stronger on his right than the left. That's a tear. That's a bicep tear. And that's why it looks like a bunched up little ball over there. Uh, and this is something that I almost always repair because it does affect form function, especially with certain people who work a lot. It affects the forearm muscle quite a bit and it affects your ability to screw things in. Um, and for my laborers, people who have a labor job, this is almost a no-brainer. There's also things called labrums. The labrum is like a bumper on a socket, provides stability to the joint. And if it's torn and your shoulder's unstable, we usually recommend restoring that bumper. This is also done arthroscopically. And it's something that is a different type of procedure than the rotator cuff. Usually by three to six months, people are fully recovered. I just had a 23-year-old kid, shoulder dislocations. He came to see me about an hour ago six months out, full range of motion, happy as a clam. And he's been like that for three months, actually. And this guy's like an amazing kid, but the, this, is what, this is what we do. This, we, get, we get them better, we repair what they have, and um, we see significant improvement. Uh, and lastly, it's arthritis. So I think some of you guys uh, will probably have arthritis. Sorry, I guess we're talking about instability first. Again, if your shoulder dislocates, uh, you do tear the labrum, you can tear your rotator cuff, and these are things that sometimes need surgery. I just got called by my friend at UCSF. Apparently one of their hockey teammates uh, dislocated their shoulder so bad, he tore two of the four rotator cuff tendons, broke the ball, broke the socket. And they're asking me, who do I know in San Francisco that can help? Luckily, the shoulder world is a small community. And I got them plugged in right away to see the specialist there. But a 36-year-old kid uh, with, from a hockey injury, bad problem. Uh, but it's nice to be able to help people out and know where to go. Uh, this, these are different forms of shoulder dislocations. Obviously, we try to pop these in as soon as possible. And uh, if you're over 60 years old and you dislocate your shoulder, chances are you tore your rotator cuff. If you're under 40, chances are you tore your labrum. 
Um, there are conditions where we're loose. Uh, the shoulder's already loose. It's supposed to be loose. It's supposed to be unstable. And that's why we can do so much with it. But there are these specific genetic conditions that make us even more prone to instability and dislocations. So it's important for the doctor to make sure you don't have one of these conditions because um, it could affect other parts of your body, not just your shoulder. And I love popping shoulders in. It's a fun thing to do. You, it's uh, satisfying, but this is something that we do in the ER usually, uh, or very rarely in the office. But, um, and I cover, I cover three local high school football teams. This is something that we encounter maybe once every other week during a football game. And we just pop it right in for the kids and put them in a sling. Uh, AC separations is a, is a shoulder separation, but not a formal dislocation. It's a separation of this joint called the AC joint. And this is something that needs surgery if it's really bad, or we rehab if it's just a partial kind of injury. Arthritis, all right, creme de la creme. I think a lot of you guys might have a little bit of shoulder arthritis uh, and might have some questions about it. This is the third most commonly replaced joint after hip and knee replacements. Shoulder replacements are on the rise up by about 300% over the past 10 to 15 years. This is why I became a shoulder specialist because it seems to be something that is happening more and more often. Uh, the, the older we are uh, lasting and the more active we're staying, people are complaining more about shoulder pain and shoulder arthritis and shoulder uh, replacements are much more kind of newer on the frontier. And I wanted to be in the, in the frontier of, of my medicine rather than something that everybody's been doing for 80 years. Uh, so shoulder replacements have been ongoing for decades uh, and reverse shoulder replacements, which we'll talk about in America has started in 2003, but in France, 1997, uh, which uh, they're kind of the pioneers and we kind of learn, we're kind of behind the French on this one thing in the world and it's shoulder replacements. Um, sorry for all the French people out there, but it's just, I just mean it in good, in good spirit. Um, so what does shoulder arthritis cause? Just like any arthritis, pain and stiffness. This causes difficulty sleeping as well. And that's because a lot of people are side sleepers and it could be painful, um, but essentially pain and stiffness. You'll have good days, you'll have bad days, just like any forms of arthritis. Um, we can try therapy, injections, multiple different types of injections. There's a set of injections that we call hyaluronic acid or gel shots. There are PRP and stem cells to help promote healing, especially early on. But we start talking about, when you see that X-ray on the right, when the ball is completely flattened and the, the cup is worn out and you're losing bone, uh, you're just grinding away. So every time this patient on the right moves their shoulder, it's a grind and it's a stiffness and painful. So when the bones start grinding in arthritis, bone on bone, we say, that causes the pain, the grinding, the stiffness. What we do with replacing of a joint, we shave a few millimeters of bone off on both sides and we put new surfaces of metal or plastic or metal and plastic um, to create a smoother movement. This is the basic concept of all joint replacements. This is something that we do in the shoulder as well. The shoulder is a little bit more intricate to do surgically. It is a harder surgery to do. And that's why I spent extra time focusing on subspecializing in this because it is uh, managing the tissues around the shoulder, which is much more uh, complex than a hip and knee replacement, which are uh, pretty easy to do. Um, secondary arthritis. So when people have a trauma or when they have a rotator cuff tear for a long period of time, or they have some of these weird autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, um, you start seeing the shoulder wear out in a very unique way, in a very weird way that becomes much more difficult to treat in a primary way, like we see with this normal primary shoulder replacement, where we re replace the ball with a ball and the cup with a cup. And this kind of uh, arthritis, and this is what we see in people who have rotator cuff tear for years, they start grinding away their bone in a different way. And, and uh, they, they, they can't really get the appropriate treatments that we would get from a regular osteoarthritis or run of the mill arthritis. So in these secondary arthritis conditions, we do what's called a reverse shoulder replacement, which is where we put the ball where the cup used to be and a cup where the ball used to be. So on the right side of your screen on that x-ray, you see that the ball has moved up. It's hitting the bone on the top. There's no rotator cuff in between. Remember where we saw the rotator cuff and the bursa in there? All that is gone. And it's just bone on bone. And it's creating almost a new cup on the top. 
and and so the shoulder not only is worn out, but it's it's out of its normal center of rotation. So if, if it's not centered and it's grinding away and there's no rotator cuff to move it well, this is very painful and it hurts. So this is something that, you know, you don't necessarily need the surgery to live. It's not life-threatening, but man, it is so much easier to get this surgery done uh, and, and give you a better form and function. So this is when we do a reverse shoulder replacement, which most people over 65 get this kind of replacement uh, and recovery takes about two to three months. It can take up to a full year. You will need therapy and all that, but by about three months, you know, most patients are pretty satisfied and very happy. And I'm going to give you an example of one of my patients. So this is a patient who's 87 years old. She's a feisty little firecracker. She's like 95 pounds. Uh, she loves to stay active. She came in screaming, wanting a surgery right away. Uh, ended up loving me and I, we love her here too. Um, and so on the right, on the left side of your screen, uh, you see her shoulder. She has a metal anchor in the bone. She had a rotator cuff repair in, tw in 2001, I believe, 20 years ago. It failed, it tore eventually, which can happen with time, but it lasted a good while. And uh, her motion was very limited. Her, it was bone on bone, grinding away, no rotator cuff. We did a reverse shoulder replacement for her. So that, that's her reverse shoulder x-rays right there that you can see. So we just cut a little bit of bone, put some metal parts in, and in between those two metal parts is a highly processed, very thick, robust plastic. We call it a liner. And that can last pretty much forever. So this is her. Everyone has masks, so you can't really tell who she is. So this is her motion at less than two months after surgery. She's swimming every day. She's very happy. And she wants to get the other side done. So kind of almost, almost difficult to tell which side had the surgery. And this lady is, uh, you know, puts on her full set of makeup. She is still a very lively firecracker and she is an awesome patient. And these are the kind of patients that I love seeing um, uh, get done and, and, and get to a better place. So in summary, um, you know, uh, shoulder uh, injuries and uh, pain is very common. And usually people have it for a long time uh, and they kind of just let it be because it comes and goes, comes and goes until, until it starts bothering them more and more. And then they start coming to see the specialist. And then we realize, oh, well, there's this, there's that. Uh, and so these are the treatments that we provide for that. And I hope I gave you guys a little bit of insight of what, you know, conditions you might get in the shoulder, when to come see me, some of the treatments and some of the, some of the stuff from the surgical standpoint. And with, with, with respect to specialists in general, it's always better, it's always better to come see the specialist first and, and try to make sure there's no red flags and make sure you're on the right set of treatment. All right, well, thank you very much, guys. Um, I'm gonna open up the floor to questions. Uh, I'm gonna look gonna at the pause. chat. We're just gonna pause for a moment. Um, I do have some problems and difficulties